Welcome to this class on force and we'll be looking at this very interesting physics topic and I'm going to make the concepts really easy and clear for you. So I'm sure after watching this video, you'll find force super easy. And guys, do check out our website, manochacademy.com. We have courses on physics, chemistry, and I'm excited to let you know that we'll also be launching the maths courses. So guys, do check out our website. We have got big discounts going on right now, and these will help with your preparation. And which reminds me, please hit, uh, please apply your force on the like button and also apply your force on our subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any videos uh, that we upload or the live classes that we have. So guys, do hit the like button right now and also share it out with your friends. So welcome to this class on force and let's begin. So uh, if you look at these pictures, I want to ask you what causes motion? Can you see in this picture, the horse and cart, they're moving, right? So they are in motion. And this ball which is being played, so there's a game of soccer, football going on and the ball is in motion, okay? And here you can see the train is in motion, right? So the question is, what causes motion? Guys, can you tell me? Awesome, awesome, very good. That's the right answer. So we know in physics, right? We've been studying the motion chapter and what causes motion? The answer is force, right? So here the horse is applying a force here, right? He's applying a force and the soccer player, right? The footballer is applying a force on this ball, right? And the engine of the train is applying a force on the train, pulling the train. Excellent guys, super. So there's clearly a force involved here that causes motion. So which brings the next question, how do we define force? Or if I ask you, what is force, right? So if you look at the pictures here, can we come up with a simple definition for what is force? Okay, so all of you try. So welcome everyone, thanks for joining this class and do hit the like button uh, and please share it out with your friends. Excellent, super. So if you look at these pictures here, right? So I see a lot of you have the right answer. Can you see this person is pushing this uh, stack of hay, right? So he's pushing this uh, roll of hay. So we can say he's applying a push here, right? Can you see with his hands, he's applying a push, right? Does everybody see that? And similarly, if you look at this horse picture, right? This horse and cart is moving. So the horse is basically pulling the cart, right? So the horse is applying a, let me write that clearly. The horse is applying a pull on the cart, right? So excellent. The, a definition in physics for force is very simple. Uh, it's either a push or a pull, right? And we apply forces all the time in our everyday lives. So when you're pushing something, right? Let's say you're pushing your book. So you're applying a push, right? Or you're pulling a table. So these are, you're applying a force, right? Which is defined as a push or a pull. Of course, you might find some more fancy definitions in your textbook. You can learn that as well. But this simple definition is enough, right? Force is defined as a push or a pull. Clear? Very good. Now, guys, let me ask you, is force a scalar quantity or a vector quantity? What do you guys think? So I want everybody to try here, right? So I want folks, uh, please write your answer. Doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. I want everybody to participate in the chat. I'm looking at your answers. So can you tell me is force a scalar or a vector quantity? First, let's understand what do these terms mean, right? So scalar quantity means it has only magnitude, right? Or value. So it has only magnitude. Uh, magnitude basically means value, right? and no direction. So that is the meaning of scalar quantity. And guys, what is the meaning of vector quantity? Okay, so I see some people are saying scalar, some are saying vector. So guys, what is the answer here? And vector quantity means uh, something which has both magnitude and direction, right? So which has both a magnitude and a direction. So for example, if I say time, right? 20 seconds, it's a scalar quantity because 20 seconds is the value, but it has no 
direction. I can't say uh, 20 seconds north, right? 20 seconds south. That doesn't make sense, right? Similarly, mass, 5 kg, it has no direction, right? But what about uh, vector quantities? Like we know velocity, right? 20 meters per second. And we can say a car is moving at 20 meters per second, let's say to the north. So it has both a value and a direction. So guys, what do you think it is about force? So definitely force has a value, right? Or a magnitude, because which we'll talk about because this person is pushing this stack of hay with a force with a certain value. Similarly, the car, uh, horse is pulling the cart with a certain value of force, right? Uh, let's say the ho horse's force is stronger than the man's, right? Let's say it's double here or triple. So definitely it has a value. But now guys, uh, think about it practically. When you're pushing something, does it have a direction? Think about it. So let's say you have a book on a table and you're pushing it, right? Then we can say you're pushing it on the north, towards the north, right? Or let's say you're pushing it towards the east or towards the west, right? So let's say this person is uh, pushing the hay uh, of stack. Let's call this, uh, this is the west direction. So he's applying a direction. Uh, in this case is towards the west. So there's a force and it has a direction, right? And this, uh, let's say the horse is pulling it towards the south. Just for simplicity, let's take the direction as south here, right? Okay, so uh, let's say this cart is moving towards the south on the road. So very good guys, force is a vector quantity because force, the answer is vector because force both has a value and as we discussed, it has a direction. So when you apply a force, you can specify the direction. But sometimes in the question, you'll find the direction is not mentioned. That doesn't mean force doesn't have a direction. It has a direction, only we've not specified it. Okay, guys, clear? Awesome. And now let's talk about the, so please remember that force is a vector quantity, magnitude and direction. Now let's talk about the types of forces. So we can broadly divide the forces into force at contact, right? So as you can see here, we have force at contact and force at a distance, right? So what do we mean by this here? So here, can you see that the person is pushing the hay, right? So when he's pushing this uh, stack of hay, right? He's applying a force here with his hand, right? And there's a contact, right? So can you see this point of contact where his hand is, right? So there's a point, uh, there's a contact between the hand and the hay, right? So this is called the contact force. Very good. Somebody has written science is life, right? Contact and non-contact forces, right? So this is a, we say it's a force at contact or we also call it a contact force. Same thing, right? Because there's a actual contact. The hand is coming into contact with the object, clear? Very good, right? Uh, Sharda Thakur says muscular force, right? So the type of force here is muscular, yes, but we are saying it's a contact force, right? So it's an example here, very good. Now forces, can they also be at a distance? Can they be applied from a distance? Yes, one simple example is gravitational force, right? So guys, you know that the earth is pulling the moon, right? So all of you know this, right? The earth is pulling the moon and is the earth in contact with the moon? right? So guys, is the earth in contact with the moon? No, right? So this gravitational force, right? So here we say this example is showing you gravitational force, which is, which is an example of force at a distance, or we say non-contact force. Excellent, guys. So you can also call it a non-contact force. Let me write it down here, right? So forces at distance can also be called non-contact force, clear? Because the force, there's no real contact between the earth and the moon. It's applied at a distance. Similarly, guys, when uh, let's say this is the earth, right? So if this is the earth and when a ball is falling towards the earth, so can you guys tell me, is this a contact force or a non-contact force? So come on guys, try this uh, question. When a ball is falling towards uh, down towards the earth, is it a contact force or a non-contact force? What do you guys think? Okay, so Shreya says non-contact, uh, Uzair says non-contact, right? Yeah, because gravity, right? So gravity can act from a distance also. You don't have to be touching the earth, right? So very good. So here again, gravity is pulling the ball down and it is an example of non-contact force. 
or or we say force at a distance clear you can use either of those terms excellent guys very good okay and there are some more examples uh, of contact and non-contact forces so whenever you see the force always think about it right uh, uh, so i have a question here for you so i'm going to uh, play this uh, video here and you tell me what type of force is this magnetic force so please watch this video here and guys what do you think this magnetic force did you see that right so did you see that the magnet is attracting that uh, iron pin right it's attracting that pin towards it so magnetic force as you saw in the video here is it a contact force or a non-contact force what do you guys think superb you guys rock excellent fantastic that's the right answer magnetic force is an example of non-contact force right because uh, see if you watch the thing carefully right uh, you'll notice that so if you uh, watch it carefully when it's attracting it it's still at a distance see it won't touch the pin right see it pulled it the magnet pulled the uh, uh, pin without touching it so clearly there's a non-contact force so gravitational force magnetic force does anybody know any other example of non-contact forces okay of course, when a magnet uh, touches it also, it can, uh, so, but we don't say it is a contact force because it can also act from a distance, okay? So very good guys. Another example, if you'd like to know of a non-contact force is electrostatic force. So remember the force between charged particles or another example is force between the protons and the electrons in an atom, right? So protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. And you know they attract each other right the and so these are non-contact forces because the electrons are at a distance from the nucleus okay so gravitational force magnetic force electrostatic force are good examples of non-contact or forces at a distance fantastic great guys now let's go ahead and talk about effects of a force right so we know for, uh, there are forces in our everyday lives so what effect can it have right so guys, can you tell me what effect can it have? Okay. And I see a lot of you are here, but I see only a few likes. So guys, please hit the like button right now. Uh, please give me a like for this uh, class. I'd really appreciate it. And go ahead and take a look at this thing. Effects of force. What are the effects the force can have? Thank you guys. Thanks. Uh, so it can set a stationary object into motion. Right. So let's say this ball is uh, stationary. Right? So let's say we have a stationary ball here. It's not moving. So stationary means the ball is at rest. Okay. So let's say this ball is at rest and we apply a force on the ball. Right. So we can set the ball into motion. Right. As we discuss, force causes can cause motion. Okay. So that is one example of we say it is an effect of the force. Right. So that first point. Second is it can stop a moving object, right? So let's say the ball is moving with your hand. You can stop the ball, right? Okay. So you can stop a moving object, right? You know, the, uh, the players, uh, whether you're playing cricket or football, right? With the hand or with their foot, they stop the ball, right? So stopping a ball, a uh, moving object, uh, a force can do. So that's an effect of force, right? And change in speed of a moving body, right? So when a person hits the ball, right? Or let's say you're playing tennis and with the racket, you hit an already moving ball. You can increase its speed or you can decrease its speed depending on your shot, right? So you can change the speed of a moving object by applying a force, right guys? And let's say this ball was moving. So if you look at the second ball here, let's say it was moving like this, okay? So let's say the ball was moving like this. So this is the direction of motion and you apply a force this way. So guys, can you tell me in this picture, what, what effect of force will happen here? Is it the first point, second, third, fourth, or fifth one? So guys, I'm uh, talking about this picture. What, uh, the second one, what effect are you gonna see here? If the body's already moving this way and we apply a force upwards. So guys, what do you think here, right? It's already a moving body, so it's not point number one, right? So out of these four points, can you tell me which one do you think is going to be the effect of force for this one? Okay. Some of you are saying four, three, right? What do you guys think? Okay. Uh, K. Gotham says four. Very good. Uh, 
right? Uh, what uh, I see a lot of answers here. Srinivas is saying four. What do you guys think? Uh, Goswami is saying four, right? So if you take a look here, yeah, because what is the direction of the moving body? It was this way, right? So the body is already moving. And if we apply a force like this, can you imagine where the ball will go? Because it's already moving like this. So then I think the ball will have a path something this way, right? It's going to move because you've applied an upward force and it was already moving like this. So you can change the direction of the moving body. And yeah, some of you said three. Sure, the speed of the moving body can also change. So this could also be a possibility. But in this picture, you can clearly see the direction of the ball will change because an upward force acts. So it's going to change the direction of the ball. Okay, very good. So yes, it can be three and four also. And then you can change the dimensions, right? So let's say if you have a soft ball, you know that when you press it, you can change the dimensions of the ball, right? So uh, let me ask you a question here, right? So I'm going to play this uh, video for you and you tell me what is the effect of force on the spring. So guys, take a look at this video carefully. Okay. So you can see I'm applying a force on the spring. And what do you think is the effect of force? Is it A, B, C or D? What do you guys think? Come on, I want all of you to try here. You guys are being really interactive. It's awesome to see. I'll just replay that video again for you. So guys, take a look and tell me what do you think is the answer here? And I want all of you to try. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. We are all learning out here. So come on, guys. Awesome, awesome to see so many answers. Okay, so I see a lot of Ds here. Okay, so if you look here carefully, right? Uh, so when you watch that video, what is the main thing you're seeing that when I'm pressing it, can you see the, uh, so let me replay it again, one second. So when I press the spring, right, you're seeing that I'm decreasing the length of the spring. I'm compressing it. And when I pull the spring, I'm elongating or increasing its length here, right? Can you see? So the primary effect as shown here is we are changing the dimensions of the body. Changing the dimensions means basically changing the shape. In other words, we are saying when you change the dimensions, excellent guys, you guys rock. A lot of you have the right answer. Bingo, it's D. So you're changing the shape by stretching or compressing, uh, by pulling, stretching the spring or compressing it, right? Very good. So please remember these different effects of force can be there and sometimes force can cause multiple effects. Here, you can. Uh, some of you are thinking the spring is moving. But uh, that's right, some parts of the spring are moving, but you can see the whole spring did not move, right? So the spring did not move uh, to a, certain, a different location. So there was no movement uh, to a different location. So that's not the right answer, right? And we are not changing the speed here. So the spring is still on the table. We are simply changing its shape. Excellent, guys. Excellent. Right? So let's talk about another important concept. We are going over some really important concepts in force and I'm going to make things crystal clear for you. So please listen carefully. And uh, it's great to see a lot of folks out here. So let's talk about balanced versus unbalanced forces. Okay. So what do we mean by this? Right. So if you look at the first picture here, right, uh, can you see? Uh, so this is basically a box that I've shown here. So what you can see here is a box right so in all these pictures this is our box here and if you focus on the first picture here a force is being applied right on the box and you can see there's a single force being applied on the box right what do you expect here so if the force uh, is applied on the box right you can uh, expect that the box will move right there's going to be some motion of the box can we expect that right so here we can expect that there's going to be some motion this way of the box right okay guys and this is known as unbalanced force okay so this type of force is when you have one force acting like this and it's causing motion it's called an unbalanced force okay why do we say that the force is unbalanced because there is a net force so by unbalanced force we mean there is a net force on the uh, box which is not equal to zero right so there's an effective force on the box which is non-zero and that causes it can cause motion and here let's say the box is moving clear guys so the net force here is not zero and these are called unbalanced forces now guys if you look at the second picture here 
again we have the same box and now let's say we apply two forces which are equal and opposite so one as we said it's a vector quantity so this uh, force on the this force is applied towards the east direction and this one is towards the west direction so guys can you tell me what do you expect will happen here right will the box move or not okay and the forces are equal here so come on guys i want all of you to try so do you expect so before we answer balanced unbalanced do you expect this box to move okay very good i see a uh, lot of you are giving answers here excellent not move right excellent guys correct because what will happen here please look carefully since the two forces are equal uh, equal in magnitude f and f right so it's not f and 2f so both are equal in magnitude so we have equal forces so equal in magnitude but opposite in direction right they're opposite in direction so you can expect they will cancel each other and you can try this yourself take a book and try to push it uh, with two fingers on both sides right or two hands and with equal force they will the book will not move because in this case this is an example of balanced force right why because the forces cancel each other so these are balanced forces and here the net force is equal to zero right so we can say the forces cancel each other they're cancelling each other and if the forces cancel each other there's no chance of motion here right because if the very good net force is zero so the forces are cancelling each other this is an example of balanced forces excellent clear guys very good okay now i want you to look at the third picture here so this was picture number one two uh, let's look at the third and then we look at the fourth one so in the third picture can you see let's say this force is uh, let's denote it by f and this is double the force here 2f on the box right so we have two forces here now can you tell me in the third picture is it balanced or unbalanced so please apply the concept is the net force zero or non-zero what do you think and what uh, what is it okay very good i see uh, Kirit Ghosh says it'll move. So guys, uh, right, very good. I see a lot of answers here. Uh, guys, uh, what do you think? It's unbalanced or balanced? Come on, all of you try. Excellent, excellent. So this is a case of unbalanced force. Can you see that? Right? Here it is unbalanced. Why? Because what is the net force here? Let's take a look. So the net force is going to be, this is 2F minus F, right? Because it's in the opposite direction. So we'll have to subtract. So there's a net force of, f here right and that's clearly unbalanced because it is not zero so we have a so we have unbalanced forces here and you can expect the box will move this way because the force towards the right or towards the east direction is greater than the west direction right so the box is going to move towards the east so there will be motion this way so please note unbalanced forces can cause motion right so unbalanced forces can cause motion balanced forces they do not cause motion right so they do not cause motion clear because the net force is zero obviously if the net force is zero how can you expect motion excellent guys and guys what about the fourth picture come on i want all of you to try and here we have four forces here so many forces and they are all equal in magnitude right okay and the direction you take a look yourself and what do you guys think is it balanced or unbalanced come on so for question four right and yeah somebody had written i missed the name i think uh, uh biju right he had written it's a another good example is tug of war you know the uh, game tug of war right so when if the two teams are equally pulling each other it's a case of balanced force if they're pulling with exact equal forces if the team are of equal strength but the winning team is basically uh, if it's pulling with a larger force then it's a case of unbalanced excellent example so tug of war is a good example where when the forces are equal then it's balanced uh, it's sorry when forces are equal it's balanced right and when if one team is winning then it's unbalanced clear so very good guys question number four the picture number four is balanced can you see because this force is going to cancel so this force will cancel this force this force will cancel this force and so the forces are cancelling each other so this is again an example of balanced forces the box is not going anywhere because the net force is zero clear 
crystal clear to you great guys and come on guys hit the like button and do share it out with your friends because we want more people joining the Manocha Academy family it's great to see the response from all of you and great to read the feedback so let's continue on our topic force now there's a very important formula in physics for force F equal to MA yeah and thanks guys for the likes so please look at this very important formula what does this formula mean in words if we say you can remember it like this that force right so force equals mass times acceleration okay so that's what these words mean right so force right I wrote F there let me write force here clearly for you so F stands for so F stands for force so force equals mass times acceleration right there's a derivation of this formula but we won't go through that in today's class right uh, we'll be uh, taking a look so you can derive this formula using Newton's second law right so you guys can explore about that yeah it's based on Newton's second law F equal to MA one of the most important formulas in physics so guys please remember this one M here is the mass right M is mass and A is acceleration right and F is force here okay so let's understand what do the uh, what does this mean with an example so let's say we have this box here right can you see this box here so let's say this box has a mass of 2 kg okay and we are pushing it with a force okay a force is applied on the box it has a mass of 2 kg and the acceleration of the box is so when we push it with a force its velocity will increase right so we can say force causes acceleration it causes motion it and the velocity is increasing and let's say the acceleration of this box when we are pushing it is 3 meters per second square so guys can you use this formula and work out the force for me I want all of you to try some of you are writing mass into gravity okay so don't uh, confuse that's a special case when we are talking about weight okay this is a general formula so guys please don't confuse this formula with um, F equal to mg that's a special case of this formula the general formula is force equals mass into acceleration super all of you a uh, lot of you have already written the answer so I can see Albert Einstein says 6 Newton uh, Raj says 6 Newton excellent guys super so if you just use the formula very simple question just use the formula F equals ma right so F equals mass uh, force is mass times acceleration simple just substitute the values here so what are the values mass is 2 kg right and the acceleration is 3 meters per second square right guys so if you multiply these numbers we are going to get 6 kg meter per second square right so first multiply the numbers 3 times 2 is 6 and then we'll also multiply the units okay and very good Jay Reddy says so 6 kg meters per second square is basically uh, we don't have to write write this whole thing kg meters per second square uh, it's known as 6 Newton right uh, to the famous uh, scientist Sir Isaac Newton so it's called 6 Newton here right so kg meter per second square is basically uh, remember that the abbreviation for this is Newton so the SI unit of force is Newton we don't have to write kg meter per second square right excellent guys excellent so please remember Newton is the SI unit of force here right and so the force that we are applying on this box so please clearly understand this so whenever you're pushing something right or pulling something you're applying a force and that force causes an acceleration on the body the body here is this box right so it's this box here and please take a look if the box is 2 kg and if you give it an acceleration by applying a force of 3 meters per second square by our calculation by using this famous formula it means force equals 6 Newton clear guys so very simple formula that you can use to calculate the force okay mass times acceleration so come on guys I want you to try this question now what is the acceleration of a ball of mass 100 gram right if a force of 2 Newton is applied on it so come on I want all of you to try this question and let me know the answer okay I see Isaac Newton's here also on the chat so yes it's uh, the we have Isaac Newton here as well uh, in our uh, session and so Newton yes Newton is the SI unit and please remember to write with a capital N okay and one very important tip guys so this is written as 2 Newton here you see right guys 
uh, but when you write the full form you have to write 2 newton with a small n okay please remember this so when you're writing the abbreviation capital n okay and we are uh, when you're writing this it's a small n okay great guys so come on i want all of you to try this question excellent uh, please go ahead and uh, see how will you solve this question here so come on guys uh, so what is the a question given here the mass so always you know write down the data clearly so uh, let's uh, take a look at our data uh, given here so the mass is given as 100 gram that's the mass of this ball right 100 grams so let's write it down very clearly m equals 100 gram okay and what is the force given to us a force is applied of 2 newton right so the force on this ball is 2 newton and we need to find our the acceleration on this ball what is the acceleration here right guys so that is the question so what do you think is the answer here come on all of you so basically we need to apply our formula right f equals force equals mass times acceleration m a right the famous physics formula f equals m a right so what is acceleration acceleration is basically nothing but since we want to calculate that so we'll take that on the left hand side is force divided by mass simple you just need to rearrange that formula okay so i see a lot of you are saying the answer is a okay let's see what do you get so uh, if you substitute the values here let's see what do we get uh, force we are going to substitute so let's try it out uh, force is 2 newton here right 2 newton okay and what is the ma uh, the mass should i substitute 100 grams here right so this is where guys you need to be really careful because remember newton is the si unit of force so the mass also needs to be in si units guys be careful here very good some of you are saying no don't put 100 grams because there'll be a, a problem of units right remember when you're doing sums you need to stay in the same unit okay so if you're given in different units you should convert so guys please don't forget to convert this to the si unit of mass what is the si unit of mass can everybody tell me here come on guys what is the si unit of mass so first tell me what is the si unit what unit should be converted to okay i see a lot of you are giving the answer okay great i see uh, mondal has said kg right vishwa kg very good so that means we need to convert this to kg so 100 gram is basically 100 by 1000 kg right be careful so that's basically 1 by 10 kg or if you like 0.1 kg right so 1 by 10 i usually like to use fractions right so 1 by 10 kg so please remember don't substitute 100 grams so this is going to work out to be 2 newton divided by 1 by 10 kg and now if you calculate what is your acceleration going to turn out to be so it's going to be 2 times 10 right so 20 is the number and uh, we don't have to worry about the units we know we are all in si units newton is si unit kg is si unit so what is the si unit of acceleration meter per second square as you can see in the uh, uh, options also it's given so very good guys those of you who did uh, who said d excellent so guys this is where b uh, they trick you with the units be careful about the units make sure you are in si units okay so here mass has to be converted to kg and then you just apply our formula remember this very important formula we just used it and we rearranged it to get acceleration is force by mass so the correct answer is acceleration of this ball is going to turn out to be 20 meters per second square okay clear very very important right units are very important so let's talk about the units so guys what is the si unit of force what is the si unit we learned today so come on guys can you tell me and great to see all of you interacting and participating in this i really love your response uh, okay again i'll warn you some of you are writing a newton with the capital n be very careful if your science teacher is strict you'll uh, you'll be given a wrong right so be careful when you write the si unit of force it should be written with small n right of course we have all respect for sir isaac newton but when writing the unit not his name we are writing unit it should be written with a small n when you're writing the full and the abbreviation is with the capital n this is a very common mistake okay guys so very good i see a lot of you are taking care in the chat to write with the small n please remember don't start with the capital n we are not writing the name of the scientist here we are writing the 
unit. Okay, guys. So Newton with a small n and bracket, you can put the abbreviation. Abbreviation is in capital N. Clear? And guys, do you know what is the CGS unit of force? So remember, uh, the CGS uh, stands for centimeter, gram, second, right? The SI, you know, we use uh, a meter, kg, and seconds, right? In the SI system, what is used? Meter, kg, and seconds, right? Okay, so guys, who can tell me? Very good, Sanjeev says uh, dine, right? Vishwa says dine, excellent, guys. Uh, Vinod says that, superb, guys. Wow, very good. So you guys know your units well, and please remember to apply them when doing the sums, right? It's good to know the units and also remember to apply it. So what is the CGS unit of force? Please remember that it is dying, right? So how do we, uh, uh, so let's understand that how would we define Newton or dying? So let's talk about that. So first remember these names, right? And I don't think dying as a short form of D or something. We have to write the full word. And again, guys, I'm seeing some of you uh, writing dying with a capital D. No, guys, when you write the unit, it's with a small d. I don't think I know any exception of a unit which the name of the unit starts with capital D. So please don't write dine with a, a capital letter, right? It's with a small letter. Please take care of it because these are, yeah, very good. Now I see in the chat, you guys are writing with small d. Excellent. So how can we define one Newton? So who can tell me? So we talked about this unit is, uh, uh, we talked about force, right? Force is uh, measured in Newton and Newton is the SI unit. So how would you define one Newton? Okay, so yeah, I'm not asking how do we convert Newton to dyne. Right now the question is, uh, uh, basically we're asking how, what is one Newton of force? How do we define it? Okay, so I'm going to teach you a very easy way to remember this, right? You don't have to learn up any definition. The thing is, just use the formula that we learned, right? We learned today, force, the force formula is mass times acceleration, right? MA, mass multiplied by the acceleration, okay? So how do we define one Newton? You can just remember it very easily with this formula. So basically, if you take a mass, if let's say a body has a mass of one kg, and if we apply a force and we give it an acceleration of one meter per second square, right? So that's what we do to the body. So if you multiply these two numbers, one kg and one meters per second square, you're basically gonna get it's one into one, right? So this is gonna give you 1 kg meter per second square and remember we said kg meter per second square is nothing but newton so that's basically one newton okay guys so how will you remember this right so uh, some of you are saying no not moving it by 1 kg to give it an acceleration because please remember the force is connected with mass and acceleration nothing to do with displacement here nothing to do with the velocity right we are talking because when we apply a force on a body we give it motion and we uh, there's an acceleration involved, right? Uh, when an unbalanced force is applied, not a balanced force because balanced force is net force is zero, right? So when you apply this force uh, using this formula, you guys can remember F equal to MA. So one Newton is basically one kg times one meters per second square. So how do we define one Newton? Uh, the force, right? Uh, what is one Newton of force? The force when you, uh, uh, force applied, sorry, so let's say uh, one Newton force, the force applied on a body of mass one kg, right? And when we give it, so force applied on a body of mass one kg and we give it a acceleration, give it an acceleration of one meters per second square, I'm just writing it in short, then the force is one Newton then force is one Newton, clear, right? So the force is gonna be one Newton, clear guys? So basically you can remember it with this formula, you don't have to learn up any definition. By the formula, you know, when you uh, apply a force on a uh, mass of one kg, giving it an acceleration of one meters per second square, that is one Newton of force, okay? And uh, of course it can be for two kg and half meter per second square, but we won't complicate the definition because two times half will also give you one. So just remember it with this simple thing. Excellent guys, clear, very good. And now some of you are already answering that question, right? One Newton, how do you convert that into dying? So come on, who can tell me how do you convert? So again, we don't have to remember this, right? How do we convert the, so this you know is the SI unit, right? So here we are in the SI unit and this you know is the CGS unit of force, right? 
So how do we convert one Newton to dyne? So let me show you a very simple way of how to remember this der derivation and then I think you won't forget it for the rest of your life, right? You'll always remember this. So please take a look. How do we do this? One Newton, as we said, is nothing but one kg meter per second square, right? Because we are in SI units, kg meter per second square, right guys? This is what is one Newton. And our goal is to convert it into dyne here, right guys? We want to convert it into dyne. Very good. Some of you already have the answer. Oh, I forgot to write. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, we've written dyne. So we wanted the number here, right? So this really doesn't matter. It's basically the number. We are converting it into dyne. All of these are in dyne. Now let's say, uh, right? Uh, so what is the, uh, what is dyne here? So let's write that down. Dyne we know is nothing but gram uh, centimeter per second square, right? Okay. So uh, dyne is one gram. So one dyne is one gram centimeter per second square. And we want to convert one Newton to one dyne. So this is our goal, right? We want to convert from this unit to this unit. So let's start with the, what we've been given. So we know that one Newton is one kg meter per second square, right? All of you know this simple. And so let's convert. We want to convert it into gram centimeter per second square. So let's convert the kg into gram. So this is nothing but, so we can write this as one kg times one meter per second square, like we discussed, right? So one kg is nothing but thousand grams. All of you agree? So one kg is thousand grams and one meter per second square, we want to convert it into centimeter per second square, right? So that's nothing but uh, one meter, you know, is hundred centimeters and uh, second square, there's no need to convert because it's uh, second is the unit in both SI and CGS system. So one meter per second square is nothing but 100 centimeters per second square. Now guys, what you need to do here, just collect all the numbers together. So what are all the numbers here? We have thousand times hundred and then gram centimeter per second square, right guys? And so if you take a look here, what, what are we getting? So this is five zeros, right? One, two, three, four, five gram centimeter per second square. Or if you like, you can write it as 10 to the power five gram centimeter per second square right guys so see we just simply converted towards our goal so we converted the uh, si system the K kg to grams the meter to seconds excellent guys a lot of you've got the right answer the correct answer is one and five zeros so you can remember one newton is one lakh dime or hundred thousand dime clear and this is how you remember it so if you ever forget it in the test you can just do this one minute derivation and you can find it's very important to practice the unit conversions. And this is the key. The key step is here, converting kg to gram and meter to centimeter. The rest is simple, just multiply. Superb, I see Ansh has got the right answer. Yuvraj, fantastic guys. Awesome, awesome. And great to hear a lot of you are enjoying the session. Thanks a lot. So please do share it with your friends. And let's try this question. Do you know what instrument can be used to measure force? So come on, apply your practical knowledge or what you've learned in your uh, classes seven, eight or earlier classes, right? Or what you're learning right now. So what instrument can be used to measure force? So come on, who can tell me? Is it a beam balance, a spring balance, a speedometer or an odometer? And come on, can I get a like from all of you? So guys do hit the like button and uh, go ahead and try this question. And I want answers from all of you. Very good. I'm seeing some people are saying A, B, okay, C, D, a lot of answers here. So guys, what do you think it's going to be? And thanks guys for the likes. Oh, great. We've reached 200 likes. Come on. I'd like some more. Excellent. Excellent. So how will you remember this one? Let's go uh, option by option. Let's start from uh, D, right? The last option. So guys, you read about this in the motion chapter. Odometer in a car, right? Or in a vehicle is used to measure the distance traveled. Okay. So this is definitely not the uh, way to measure force because we want to directly measure force, not uh, calculate distance and speed, you know, and uh, then do some calculations. We want to measure force. So D can't be an uh, answer. And guys, you know, speedometer, right? So speedometer is used to measure speed. You guys know that, right? The speedometer of a vehicle is used to measure speed. Okay. So that is certainly not the correct answer here, right? Because we are looking to measure force our question is saying which instrument can measure force now is it beam balance or spring balance okay very important concept in physics so beam balance guys is used to measure 
mass, right? You know, the beam balance, right? When they put uh, the object on one side and the weights on the other side, you're basically measuring the mass of the body, okay? And you know that mass is not force, okay? And guys, you can remember this, that uh, if uh, you guys know, spring balance is used to measure weight, okay? So, and now my question to you is, is weight a force? What do you guys think? Is weight a force? Okay, we didn't talk a lot about weight today, but think about it. Uh, what is weight? So if you take any body, right? So if you take any body like this, right? Uh, the weight is basically, so what is weight here? Right? So we are talking about, okay, I used yellow for weight. So let me just redraw that quickly for you guys, right? So let's draw the body in orange here. So let's say we have this box, right? Which is our body. And the weight is the force due to gravity, which acts downwards, right? You know the weight of the body. And a lot of you are saying, yes, the weight has the formula mg. It's a special formula where g is the acceleration due to gravity. So you guys can look about the uh, research on this on your own. We will not go into details in this class. So weight is also a force, just like force is m times a, right? Because weight is the force with which the earth pulls a body towards its center, right? So weight is the force due to the earth on the body, right? Force of earth, right? On a body. And you know that it is the earth is always pulling a body to the center, right? I'm sitting on the chair here because of the force of gravity, right? Otherwise, I'll be floating around in the room and so would you, right? So you know the your weight is pulling you down. And uh, you, might have know, uh, you might know this, that when you're traveling, you want to measure the weight of your luggage, you use a spring balance to measure the weight of the luggage, right? So weight is a force. And so the correct answer is spring balance. And you can also, uh, let's say you use a spring balance to pull a table. So you can use the reading of the spring balance to measure the force that you've applied on the table. So typically spring balance, yes, it's used to measure weight. But whenever you're pulling something, if you pull it along with the spring balance, right? So use the spring balance to pull it. The reading of the spring balance will give you the value of force. So very good, guys. Those of you who said B, if you got it wrong, no worries. You've learned the concept. So guys, the correct answer here is spring balance. Excellent, excellent. And here's one homework question for you, which I want all of you to try. Interesting question. A man is pushing a heavy box as shown in this picture. The box does not move, okay? So this is the box here, right? Can you see the heavy box that he's pushing? It does not move. What is balancing the force of the man, right? Because it's not moving, it's clearly a balanced force, right? So is it gravity? Is it friction? The weight of the box or normal reaction? What do you guys think? I won't give you the answer here because I want each one of you to try it. And guys, do write your answer in the comments below. I promise to take a look at your answers and try. I'll try to reply to them as soon as possible. So guys, please write down your answer in the comments below. I look forward to reading everybody's answers, okay? Excellent, guys. So here are your uh, things. And you can also try this practically yourself, right? Take a heavy box or something heavy, try pushing it and think because physics is all about the physical world, right? So you should try to connect your everyday life with science, right? That's the goal. And so you try it yourself and think about it, analyze, is it due to gravity, friction, weight of the box or normal reaction? And I look forward to reading everybody's answers. And guys, as I mentioned, we have this website. It's actually a web app, you know, because you can uh, use our uh, uh, website, our web app on a phone, on a tablet or on your desktop computer. So that's the nice thing. You can use it wherever you want. Uh, so it's not just a website, it's a web app, manochaacademy.com. And we have these courses on physics, chemistry, and soon we are gonna be launching the maths course for class 10 this week and for class nine next week. So guys, do stay tuned and do check out our courses. I'll put the links below and please do share it out with your friends. Thank you guys for your support. I see a lo lot of awesome comments here on the chat and a big thanks from Manocha Academy team uh, because we keep reading your comments and it's uh, great to see all the lovely feedback from each one of you. So thanks a lot for your support. Guys, uh, do try the question I gave you and do check out our website. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button right now. Click on the notification bell so that you don't miss out the live classes 
and uh, the videos that we upload and guys uh, do hit the like button and please share it out with your friends okay so do let your friends know by whatsapp facebook you know uh, send it out to them so that we can have more people on the classes and thanks a lot uh, this is sandeep manocha signing off it was a great session uh, you guys really participated well and i hope the concept of force is crystal clear to you so please apply a force on the like button and a force on our subscribe button thanks guys for being here and please stay healthy stay safe i pray for everybody's health and it was a great session hope you enjoyed it too i loved it okay guys take care bye